Tonight, I'm going to try to hack together a power supply unit. Now, the idea behind this is uh, a lot of times I'll need 12 volts, 6 volts, um, you know, and I have a big assortment of uh, wall wart adapters. Well, I garbage picked um, some power supplies today. This is like a nice 300 amp, uh, 350 computer power supply, so I'm I'm not actually going to use that one tonight. That's going to go into a computer. Uh, the one I'm going to use for this project is it's made by Hap Controls, and it's for an arcade game. They make uh, joysticks and trackballs and switches and power supplies too, all kinds of arcade game parts. So we have these connectors here. It tells you what they are. There's um, plus 5 volts, 20 amp maximum load, a ground, minus 5 volts with a half an amp, 12 volts with 8 amps and minus 12 volts with a half an amp. So it's going to have, uh, it's going to be pretty uh, uh, flexible. It's a bipolar, um, which means there's uh, there's two of them in there. Sometimes you need the bipolar power supplies if you're working with something that's real goofy. And oh, the other, the nice thing about this is uh, it's got an adjuster for the 5 volts, so you can drop it down to like 4.5 and, and then almost up to like 6 which is pretty cool and I'm gonna use this uh, I think they call this a barrier strip we're gonna have the wires coming out of the power supply on this side and then uh, we'll paint these red black red black whatever and label them you know 12 volt or whatever they're gonna be so when you're testing something out you're gonna be able to just stick a wire in here and get your voltage It'd be a real handy thing and you know it's got a it's got a cooling fan I'm gonna put an extra fuse in line for the 12 volts it's fused inside, so it's going to be, this is something I wanted to make something like this for years, and I never got around to doing it. Um, the other thing that I thought would be handy for this is um, a lighter, uh, automotive cigarette lighter plug, because a lot of stuff, you know, I got that plug on there, and this is 12 volts with, uh, it had 20 amps, so I'll be able to, be able to power stuff off of this. So it's going to be, the only thing is that this is such a nice, it's got the wall, chrome wall plate, man, so this is a dream come true. I got this out of a conversion van that was filled with hornets in the back of the junkyard. So this is like uh, something I got from the Infinity dumpster, and I just have to kind of fabricate a housing that's going to hold this in there. So we're going to be monkeying with that later. So what I did here, I got it laid out rough, and I'm going to mark it where I'm going to cut it. Uh, chop this down here, move that back. That's going to be our... Uh, the plug for the cigarette lighter. It's going to fit in there like that. We'll screw it in from the bottom. It, these things have mounting holes in them. Uh, but it turns out the screws, eh, some of them were too short, some were too long, so I'm going to have to uh, going to have to trim one of the couple of the screws down. Now, what I like to do is use a straight edge. It gives you a good cut. And another thing is, you know, if I can avoid to uh, not making uh, too many cuts. I don't like running the rip saws all the time, and you know, every time you do it, it gets a project gets a little more crooked. So I mean, I could go ahead and trim this down and make it a little shorter, but then this stuff would be awfully close to the edge. It's, it's going to protect it a little bit, having a little bit of overhang, and it's not going to waste that much space. So I like to do stuff smart, so you only, you know, lazy man's way, you only have to do one cut. Now for this, these things are great. I call them paddles. I'm sure that's not what they're supposed to be called. I did that for a couple minutes, and that was how I, you know, you put that in your pipe and smoke it. Now this thing, I don't know what that's called, but this is really nice if you've had like 18 to 20 beers, because you can put this sucker on there and still get a pretty straight cut. This piece of wood came from a stereo cabinet somebody threw away. Now you can see that it's it's particle board, but you know you always you don't always need a good solid sturdy piece of oak or some fine 
exotic wood in your hand. Something like this, the reason I really care for it is it's, it's already finished, you know. I mean, it's kind of a hassle having to spray everything flat black. With this, I probably will cut the sides in black just because I'm goofy like that. But uh, it saves me some time and actually, you know, it looks a little better. You could, you know, you could spill a glass of milk on this and get a straw, you know, you're good to go. On second thought, I am going to make another cut. It'll be a little smaller then. This is going to be the 12 volt plug going to go in here and I'm going to mount it with some screws from the bottom. Now the idea with this is I use this paddle tool, I'm sure it's not called that, but I just cut a little bit in the hole that I, that I already drilled and then that way when I use these screws in here, the fasteners, they'll be up, see who's in here? No one. Who's in here? A little guy. Perfect. Now this screw is going to be a little long when I run it through the barrier strip. It's going to actually want to poke out the bottom of the board and then we'd be scratching up the table when we use it. So I, when I run into that problem I use my homemade grinder and uh, safety first. Just grind it down, you know, take a little bit off of there. That's going to be hot so you don't want to really, you don't want to really touch it too much. One of the things you'll notice when you're monkeying around with these power supplies is most of them only have two mounting points. There's this little rail here on the one side. So what I do, because I've mounted a few of these, is uh, I take the top off and I drill a hole. You look at it, you find a spot where there's nothing in there. And then I use a center punch and drill a hole through the bottom. So now I'm able to put a screw in through in the corner here that's going to hold it on. It's only going to have three, but this thing isn't going to be really flopping around too much, I hope. So what we did, I labeled this a little more clearly. Um, and when I was testing it, I also noticed that these two cables, they weren't listed on the on the pinout sheet on the on the unit these were putting out 110 volts which i don't really like that i mean ac doesn't mix with water i'm pretty sure there's some water in here so it probably really doesn't mix in this case so what i did i taped them off i took them out of the grommet and i'm just going to coil them up and keep them inside the chassis i think they'll be fine in there uh, these are all labeled here so i know what they are so now i'm just going to go ahead and solder them so they have some tin on there because they're going to be screwed into that barrier strip. And, and then I can go ahead and mount everything up and test it and we should be ready to go for our hacked power supply. So we finished it up and I'm ready to do a test. I've got the tester connected to this cigarette plug. So I'm going to fire it up. Fan's running. I'm going to plug it in. We could watch the meter. Yeah, putting out 9 volts right now. There's an adjuster on the side. You can turn it up. You know, the fan turns up too. So yeah, it's running around 11.5 volts right now. So i got to test the other connections on this. I think it's called a barrier strip, this guy here. Um, you put your wires on this side. So we got 5.6 and over here, 11 and a half. This should be another 5.6 here. Yeah. And then this blue one should be the minus. So yeah, there's a little minus symbol. That's reverse polarity. That's a lesser amperage bipolar. That's the other minus side. And then this white one here, I think this is the bipolar 5 volt. It's also, uh, that's a half an amp output, so it's a real low output. So if I need something, if I need uh, smaller voltages, uh, uh, light amp applications, I can tap into these white and black wires here, reverse polarity, and get what I need. If it's 5 volts with more amperage, I can go over here on the black and red. Same thing with the 12, black and yellow high amperage output, or blue and black. It's just a little bit confusing. You've got to be careful. You don't want to reverse polarity. Because uh, if you're going to have a lower amperage application, you're, uh, you're going to use this bipolar side, which is negative here, so you have to flip-flop. Meaning your blue would be the ground and the black would be the positive. 
reverse polarity. So it works, and uh, it's like I said, this is something I wanted to put together for a long time, and I'm I'm happy I did because I'm, a lot of times I need some voltages just for a test. I mean, this wouldn't be a permanent solution to power something. This is a testing unit or for monkeying around. So there you have it, folks, the hacked power supply.